So in this video, I'll uh, demonstrate how to use the FFT uh, function on the Siglent uh, SD1202 uh, scope. And it's uh, fairly straightforward to do it. Um, you may have to, to do it properly, you should do some math calculations. But I'm not going to do it, I'm just going to give you kind of a back of an envelope kind of view of it. But the way you set up the FFT on, my, on the Siglent scope is exactly the same as you would set up the FFT on the um, my old uh, Instec scope. It's basically the same way you would, you would set it up. So basically you would go, uh, well right here I've got my probe 1 connected to the uh, signal generator. I'm just using the uh, PARC uh, uh, prototype for the signal generator and I've got the probe connected to the output of that uh, a clock zero which is 4.91 uh, megahertz 4.91 megahertz so you can see it right there and that's the signal there it's a square wave got a little bit of ringing uh, due to the probe probes not uh, you know uh, I guess uh, perfectly terminated and it's, it's adding some uh, inductance and capacitance so you're getting that ringing but uh, the way that you would use your, your uh, FFT is you would hit the math button and under the math operator here uh, you can select various things and you would select FFT. Right now it's already selected as, as an FFT. The next thing you have to select a source. So if you were to hit this button it would select a so source. Right now I only have channel 1 enabled. But if I had channel 2 enabled, and uh, let me go back to math, go back here. Here I could select either channel 1 or channel 2. So I'm just going to go and disable channel 2. We don't need it. It's just cluttering the screen. So the next thing is the window. And uh, depending what resolution you want, the window is kind of, it's taking off extrane extraneous frequencies. It's kind of taking the signal and it's putting an envelope across the signal. Um, Hanning is the default. Um, if you use Blackman, uh, you get better um, amplitude resolution. And the other, uh, han uh, Hamming and uh, Rectangular, you get better, f better frequency resolution. So depending what you want, you would pick your window. I just usually leave it at uh, Hanning. But apparently if you select the Blackman, um, and the way you select this is by moving your um, universal cursor adjustment knob here, you would turn that, and that allows you to select what you need. So you select Blackman, and then you push the button to, to select it, and uh, it's select, selected. The center frequency is if you look at the center here of the display that's going to be what the frequency it's going to shift this FFT so it's going to be measuring it's going to place that frequency right at that center mark the horizontal the Hertz per division is telling you what the resolution is per division so right there it's set to 20 uh, megahertz per division so if we were to go in and use the cursors, push the cursors, and you could select the horizontal cursors or the vertical cursors. Uh, this, this cursor is selecting your time base, and in this case it would be frequency, and in this case it would be amplitude, that measures amplitude, or you could turn them both on. But right now the source is set to math. You could set your cursors to go to channel 1, to measure uh, amplitude like voltage or um, uh, time but uh, we've got it selected right now for source I've got it selected to measure frequency measure so it's got the vertical cursors but it's measuring horizontal resolution I think it's called the horizontal cursors but I could be wrong so then you just go and adjust so let's measure what the actual division here is. So if we come over here, place one cursor there, push the button, 
Now both cursors are highlighted, so if you were to move, you'd move both of them. Uh, push it again, and then the other one's selected, so let's move that to there. And now if you look at the little display here, that's showing you the data from the cursors. So it's, so it's showing you the frequency of those cursors, and the delta is showing it's 20 megahertz. So that is, in fact, correct if you go back to math. It was showing 20 megahertz per division, so each division is showing you 20 megahertz. If we wanted to go and measure those peaks and look at the frequency between those peaks, you could take the cursor over, put it on one peak, uh, take the other cursor, move it over to another peak. So now the cursors are measuring the frequency. So this first cursor here, that I guess is X2 because that's measuring lower frequency. That's measuring 4.3 megahertz. And the next um, uh, peak there, it's 14.7 uh, megahertz. Now the problem with this, this is pretty narrow and your resolution sucks. It's saying that you're, you're measuring 20 megahertz per, resolu per uh, division and uh, that's not very good. So if we were to go ahead and change this, use the cursor here to change this, and let's try and lower it down. You could raise it up, so there's 200 megahertz per division. You can't see anything. So let's go out, let's go out to 5 megahertz. Oh, yuck, look at that. Look how wide those peaks are. And that's because we're looking at 5 megahertz per uh, division. So if we were to go down to, say, 48 kilohertz, you can't see anything because the problem is the time base is, is is too quick. It's not capturing enough data to do the FFT. So what we need to do now is we need to go and change our time base. Right now it's set to 200 nanoseconds per division, so we need to go and increase that. So as you increase that, you'll see the resolution here now getting better and better. So if I was to dial this down, let's go to 100, let's go to 100 kilohertz, as I change the time base, well, I guess there's no frequency there, but you get to see um, more resolution. So the way you change your center frequency, so let's change your center frequency to be the 4.9 megahertz of my signal generator. So push that, you could dial it, you could change it by moving the dial, or if you push the button, a little calculator screen comes up a little keypad and you can use the cursor. If you turn the cursor, you can change the numbers there. So let's go on 4, push the button to select 4, move over to point, push the button to, oops, let me, uh, let me clear this. That's a problem with this. It's a pain in the butt to use. So four point nine, and then you've got here. This is milla, kilo, mega, giga, and I don't know what the T is. Um, so we just go over to M for mega. So that's four point nine megahertz, and there's our signal there or 4.9 megahertz signal. So let's go ahead and change the time base and you'll see here I'm going to increase the time base you'll see the peaks getting wider the resolution's getting worse. So as you change your time base you get better resolution. So uh, for example there, suppose we wanted to see the harmonics so 4.9 megahertz, we would want to get another harmonic in here, so we'd want to increase our um, resolution there, horizontal resolution, to get a 9 megahertz peak. There's a 9 megahertz peak coming in, and the way we could verify that, let's go back to cursor, push the cursor, and let's move one of our cursors over. See, as I'm moving this cursor, the X2 is changing. So I'm over there. See, it's 9.8. So that is a harmonic of that 4.9 
uh, megahertz uh, um, peak there. So let's continue, go back to math, push math, push the horizontal resolution, and let's change that now. We're at 1 megahertz, so that's uh, 1 megahertz, 2, 3, so that's 4.9, 5.9, 6.9, 7.9, 8.9, 9.9. .9, 9 .9. That's why it's showing up there. So let's change that to 2. Now all of a sudden you see this thing shrinks. And uh, that's because our we've got such a large resolution here and we're not sampling enough to pull that across. So again, you would change your time base. I went and I changed, see uh, my time base was 200 microseconds there. And I went and I changed my time base to 500 microseconds okay, per, per division. And all of a sudden I've got more of the screen filled up. I'm pulling in more data. So let me go up to one millisecond. Usually I sample it, uh, I have it going at one or two milliseconds. And there's the 4.9 megahertz peak. If I go back to cursor, push the cursor button, and I move my cursor over, you'll see that is in fact the, uh, oops, no, it's not. That's 5.7 uh, megahertz. So we need to move that over some more. All right, I went back to 200 kilohertz. Uh, that should be up to 2 megahertz. There we go. I changed it to 1 megahertz. And it uh, looks as if I can't get any better resolution than that. So there's the uh, 4.9, the 9.8 megahertz harmonic. But that's uh, generally how you would do it. Now if you wanted to measure the amplitude, the signal strength here, you would go to cursor and you would select the uh, the horizontal lines or the vertical measurement and again you could move your line. So right there that's showing me that that signal is at uh, uh, 16 uh, dBm. Now, you've got some options in terms of measuring things here. And let's just go to the next page. And uh, I'll talk about uh, DBM in a second, but uh, how to measure D DBM and uh, uh, other values. But let's just talk about some of these other things here. You've got a scale, which is telling you the horizontal, the vertical resolution. So the resolution here is 20 dB per um, um, division there. So if we were to go and change this, see if I take it to 5, it disappears off the screen because it's too high resolution. Now the reference level, this is what's saying that that's moving your reference level. So it's shifting the display up or down. So if I wanted to get a better resolution, say 10, oops, 20, go to 10, see it shifts the whole display down, so I can go over here now and I can shift the display up. Oh, moving it the wrong way. There, I can move it up. See it, but now at that resolution, the noise here uh, looks to be very large. Now, the other option you've got here, this is in split screen mode. It's showing the signal here, and it's showing the FFT here. I like this mode because it, I can see the, the signal, but you can go to the next page, and you can go to display, and you can, ah, uh, sorry, not there. Where is it? Oh, here, mode, split screen, you can go to full screen. or exclusive, sorry, you go to exclusive, then it takes up the whole screen, right? And uh, let's go back to 20 dB, and let's move this back, move this back down. So there you got, uh, so you could see a lot more by going to exclusive mode on the, um, uh, display option here. Now this is where you could select your units. 
Uh, here you can change, you can put your, what your um, impedance is. So for example, you could put in here, you push the button, you could say, okay, it's a 1500 ohm load. So now it's going to calculate dBm. It's going to take the voltage, and it's going to uh, uh, assume that that's that's a termination resistance, and it's going to give you dBm relative uh, to that. So that's kind of cool. An SA doesn't do that because an SA is fixed. It's um, uh, 50 ohms, but because our scope probe is a uh, high impedance, it's not. It's not really uh, loading the signal down, and whatever signal it reads, whatever voltage it reads, it can assume that it's going into a 50 ohm load or a 1500 ohm load, and it can calculate what the uh, uh, dBm is. So in your units, you can uh, again you use the cursor, the uh, universal um, uh, knob here. I can't remember what it's called. It's called universal select. So um, there you can select whether it's going to be dB, volts, RMS. dB, uh, volts, RMS, or dBm. So you've got an option there to select what you would like. So, and that's, uh, that's basically all I have to say about the, the FFT function. That should give you a general introduction. Um, the best thing is to just go and play around with it and use it. And uh, the more you use it, the better you'll get. And uh, it uh, works pr pretty good. Uh, as I said, I use it to get uh, good ballpark uh, values of uh, frequencies and, and uh, amplitudes of signals.